now you will witness the might of my power. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Who knows? I might even learn something. Like how to support them on Patreon. It's a year since we reviewed Ator the Fighting Eagle, past time we looked at its sequel, The Blade Master. I've never seen you looking so worried. Opening with epic voiceover. After the fiery, chaotic creation of the Earth. Never good when the backstory starts with the creation of Earth. Our world is populated by wild, cruel and ignorant men. And very little has changed. First up, we meet Acronus, the Great One, apparently Ator's mentor, despite his absence from the first film, and his daughter, Mila. I've always wanted you to be wise. But I've learned to live with the disappointment. He's called Mila here for a reason. I've waited until now to show you my discovery. It's a nightlight. I've seen enough of these films to realise that we are about to be sold a MacGuffin, some mystical, all-powerful thing that will be the goal for everyone in the film, despite the fact that, if you look closely, it's meaningless. It is everything and nothing. It is life and death. Goodness, riches, poverty and evil. They usually disguise its meaninglessness a little better than that. Then it might... might be a weapon. Or a hairdryer. Could be anything. To protect a thing of such great import, there is only one man. Ator. Acronus then gives a three-minute summary of the first film. Captured the glistening, charmed shield of Murdor and killed the shadow. No, he didn't. It was Sabrina Siani. Who then got killed at the end so Ator could ride off with his true love, Sunya. Later, when Sunya died. Wait, what? I'm oh, just gonna breeze past that. Ator retired to the Eastern Land, where he lives in the company of Thong, an Oriental warrior and sage. I don't even miss Sunya. Acronus' story finally ends. She just wander off while he was talking. I don't blame her, but still. Word of the MacGuffin has reached bad guy Zor. I thought that among your many virtues, the first I'd find was forgiveness. I find it mightily confusing that Zor boasts the same look as the bad guy from the first film, Greba. Director Joe D'Amato has a very clear idea of what a bad guy looks like. Acronus sends Miller to fetch Ator, but it won't be an easy journey. When you seem to have reached the ends of the earth, when it seems that nature herself declines to accompany you any further on your journey, then you'll have reached the domain of Ator. Made harder when, as she flees, <coughs> it won't be easy to reach the end of the earth with an arrow in your chest. Oh, help! Fortunately, Acronus's castle is end of the earth adjacent. You pay a little extra, but the time you save. Which is good, because Zor could kill Acronus at any moment, forcing him to play for time. You may rest assured that in order to thwart your evil designs, I will draw upon all my power. I assume that's what he's doing. I can't think of any other reason for someone to talk this slowly. Although Zor is no better. I thank you for the compliment. And I trust I'll be worthy of it. This film was apparently a bit of a rush job with scant time for inessential frivolities like a script meaning that it bounces between episodic encounters. They're invisible! Guess the extras didn't show up that day. Cirque de Samurai. Since we left the caves, I've had the feeling that we're being followed. Keeps muttering something about my precious, I don't know. Feels like on the way back from the ends of the earth, they've taken the scenic route, which raises questions. My patience has its limits. I'm a 
Does it? You're trying to get information out of him. You haven't even tortured him. What's stopping you? Of course, I could easily use torture to make you tell me, but that would be too simple. I think there may be another reason. You're wonderful. You do amuse me and provoke me. This is turning into the chalk and cheese sword and sorcery rom-com I never knew I needed. Stop! Prude. Ator's next mini-adventure is at a village in thrall to an evil cult. The Kungs have always demanded the blood of man. They're funny that way. While Ator is lecturing the villagers on self-defense... Surprise is an excellent weapon. Thong makes a discovery via classic Dark Corners breakout character, Briefly Conscious Exposition Man. My name is Rabani. Tell Ator they're going to trap him. Amazing how there's no sign of this being written as they went. Ator and Mila are captured. I wonder if it wouldn't have been easier if we had just kept on going to the aid of my father. Voicing the thoughts of the entire audience. Turns out the villagers made a deal with the Kungs. I give you Ator, and in return, our village will no longer have to sacrifice to your serpent god. <laughs> Doesn't quite go according to plan. The Kungs are also working with Zor. It's obvious you're not cut out for good deeds. Burn! But all your science has proved helpless against the powers of imagination and cunning. Science? Uh, was he noticeably using science to this point? No. The sacrifices are thrown into a snake pit. No! No! To the complete indifference of the snakes. Oh. But there's something bigger down there. Fortunately, just killing the innocent girls before Ator faces it. Sadly, the filmmakers failed to notice that their special effects man's only previous credit was a Punch and Judy show. Now they reach the castle, but how can Ator get past its high walls? I'm mean. Could have made it look like it was made of animal skins and wood, but no, that's very clearly a hang glider over a completely different castle. Where fighting eagles dare. Once you've decided on hang glider, explosives are a very small step. And if you had been a better student, so you could be flying too. That's just bitchy. <laughs> Why didn't I think of this earlier? In comparison to the fighting eagle, at least here Ator is the hero, but the execution is so lazy and slapdash, they don't even care how obvious it is that they don't care. I don't see how I failed. But I'm sure Ator 3 Iron Warrior will be substantially better. Tune in next year. <laughs> Do you know your Karloff from your Cushing, your Lugosi from your Lee, your Day of the Dead from Dawn of the Dead? Find out in Dark Corner's new horror film quiz book, available now on Amazon. 500 questions about horror films old and new, mostly old. In how many films did Lon Chaney Jr. play the mummy? Where is the train to Busan coming from? The ideal gift for the horror fan in your life, and if that wasn't enough, Purchase gets you access to an exclusive bad movie review. Available now on all good Amazons. How well do you know your horror? Thanks for watching. Why not treat yourself to a Dark Corners horror movie quiz book? There's a link in the description below. Is Hang Glider the most blatant anachronism in a fantasy film? Let us know in the comments below. No, you're not going. I'll decide when you're ready.